Now let us start this topic material selection and objective of this lecture is definitely how can we select material for a particular application. Now selecting material having different aspects and what is the step by step systematic procedure by which we can select material that we are going to discuss in this lecture. So here you can see that uh, there are different attributes like their physical, mechanical, thermal, electrical, economic, environmental, all these uh, attributes of materials are there and depending upon uh, the functions for a particular applications, what is that particular component is made for. So that is what is the final uh, objective of that component is going to do and accordingly material you have to select. So different kinds of mechanical, thermal, electrical properties and the environmental condition like uh, corrosion or some economic conditions like how cheap the material is. These are the important parameters definitely in selecting the materials. But these are not the only things that is uh, going to decide the final material selection because when you try to give shape of the material, it is not that the raw material you can use for a particular component but the component having certain shape and the shape may be very complicated and for uh, giving this kind of a shape different manufacturing processes are important so giving shape in, uh, to a particular component of that material whether that procedure is very costly or not whether that procedure is very easy or not so that is a very important uh, decision making factor in selecting materials Another one is the different kinds of process. Uh, it can be manufacturing process, it can be extraction process of that material from the ore or it can be uh, the availability of the material or it can be different kinds of hardening or the strengthening mechanism of that material. So it also depends uh, on that factors also. The final selection depends on these factors also. Now uh, the function of a particular a component is definitely support a load contain a pressure maybe in a pressure vessel okay or it can transmit heat okay uh, in case of a uh, suppose a condenser tube you want to uh, design so in that case the design aspect will be it will transfer heat very easily if you want to design a pressure vessel so in that case that particular uh, vessel having a uh, large pressure maybe within it okay or uh, you may be interested to design a particular machine component or a particular structural member so it will take certain load that load may be tensile may be compressive so these are the different kinds of functional requirements that material or the component having and the material have to take all these considerations so what what does the component do? The objective is make things cheaply, lightweight, increase safety, etc. or combination of these. Okay. So this is what needs to be maximized or minimized. Okay. So like uh, whether uh, we want to make a component uh, very uh, definitely our requirement will be a lightweight component in many of applications. Okay. Uh, like automobile application or um, aircraft applications or in many uh, applications since the if the weight is reduced then you know the fuel cost will be reduced and other things it has to be cheap so that may be a requirement okay that needs to be minimized maybe uh, increasing safety okay so depending upon the application some of the uh, these objectives can be sacrificed, some of the objectives cannot be sacrificed. So these things are the important decision making factor in selecting materials. Now what are the, there are certain constraints maybe sometimes. So make things within a given budget, okay, maximum required weight, safety requirements, etc. or the combinations of these. So these are like constraints, you have to maintain these constraints and then you have to design and you have to select the material. Okay, so you cannot uh, get out of these constraints. Okay, so these are kind of non-negotiable conditions that is to be met. Okay, so uh, uh, 
what are the negotiable but desired conditions that you have to look for okay now a very important parameter uh, that is required to be defined to achieve certain uh, functional requirement uh, that material index is called the performance index okay so this performance index is basically combination of material properties that characterizes the performance of a material in a given application and the objective of uh, uh, finding out the performance index depending upon a particular application is always such that uh, our objective will be definitely to increase this performance index and what is this performance index it is basically a combination of material property and it depends definitely on the particular applications okay we'll give example and then this concept will be uh, further cleared now performance of a structural element may be specified by the functional requirement the geometry and the materials property okay so any structural element or a machine component its function and requirements geometry and the material property are the things that will decide finally its performance so its performance is function of its functional requirement its geometrical requirement and its material requirement okay and finally uh, our objective is to increase or maximize the performance index okay so consider only the simplest cases where these factors form a separable equations if we consider in that way so performance uh, can be thought of as if it is a function of functional um, needs functional needs may be like force and all that geometrical needs means the different dimensions may be in, involved in this function and material uh, property index basically indicates different kinds of material property combinations will come under this function okay now here is a list where you can see uh, depending upon the particular application these are like performance index okay so here you can see suppose you want to design a tie rod you know the tie rod is a particular rod that can take only the tensile uh, force in it okay and the minimum weight okay let me take the laser pointer suppose you want to design a tie rod and such that certain constraints are there like it has to be very steep and the weight should be minimum okay so if we want to design that then the performance index that you have to consider is modulus of elasticity divided by density suppose you want to design a beam as you know beam is a member that takes a transverse load okay and if we want to design a beam and it has to be very stiff and the minimum weight then the performance index is e to the word half divided by rho suppose we want to take design a beam and that is having minimum weight but its strength should be high strength not so stiff so you have to understand the difference between stiffness and the strength uh, strength means it can take high amount of stress and the stiffness means its deflection will be minimized it will not deflect easily okay so that is what is the stiffness okay it will be very rigid its deflection will be minimum strength means the stress that is developed within the material uh, may be very high but still it will not fail so it's a uh, high strength uh, design suppose you want to design a beam with a minimum cost and stiffness then this will be the performance index okay similarly uh, suppose you want to design a column with minimum cost and the buckling load definitely it will take a large buckling load then this will be the performance index so you can see in the performance index it is basically the material property uh, those combinations are coming but the question definitely uh, will come to your mind that why different dependence sometimes it is linear sometimes it is square root or some other powers why different kinds of uh, property combinations are coming depending on a specific requirement that you want to design okay let us see one by one and the concept will be clear suppose one example we have taken here that material selection for high strength lightweight 
tied out okay so one by one we see that we have to select material for a high strength okay a high strength tie rod tie rod is what tie rod is a member that can take only tensile load okay uh, it cannot take compressive load it can take only tensile load okay and lightweight it has to be lightweight okay that means the mass has to be minimized okay and the high strength so two main thing that is high strength and the lightweight and based on that we have to select the material okay so here you can see suppose f is the force the tensile force that has been applied suppose the length of the tie rod is l and suppose the cross sectional area is a now tie rod is a common mechanical component and the functional needs uh, functional needs are basically f you can see the uh, force l is length and sigma f is the failure stress this failure stress can be the uh, yield point of the material okay or it can be the ultimate point but it is some kind of a strength of the material say failure strength of the material okay mm. now tie rod must carry tensile force f and no failure so stress must be less than sigma f so that stress that will be developed because of this f must be less than sigma f so this thing you can easily understand that f by a that is the maximum stress that will be developed in the tie rod must be less than its strength value suppose sigma f is the strength value okay to be very specific what you can do the strength value divided by factor of safety and you can write that f by a will be equal to sigma f by s kind of a thing okay now another thing l is usually fixed by design so l may be fixed so basically the free variable is basically this cross-sectional area so cross-sectional area can vary so that is what is the free variable this is a very important term you have to remember here cross-sectional area is the free variable while you have to design it for a strong and it has to be low mass okay so this is one condition you have understood from the strength point of view high strength so that f by a is less than equal to sigma f by s and the mass of the rod is what the mass of the rod is density length into cross sectional area now what we can do here uh, we can eliminate the free design parameter which one is the free design parameter that is the variable that is cross sectional area so from these two equations you can eliminate a so you just find out a from this equation and put that value of a in this expression so if you do that what you will get you will get that if divided by m by rho l is less than is equal to sigma f by s so basically what we have done we have eliminated from these two expression a so finally what you are getting if you rearrange you will find that m will be is equal to f which is force s which is factor of safety l is the length into density divided by the failure strength of the material okay which this we have not yet specified but it can be uh, in in strength of the material or it can be the ultimate strength of the material or according to some failure theory it will come anyway so this is what is the combination here you can see the first part which contain the force which is the functional needs okay here you can see this is the geometrical parameter and here you can see it is a combination of material property and our requirement is what the lightweight so mass should be as low as possible so to make this rod lightweight that means mass to be lower then this quantity has to be lower so if this quantity has to be lower then which material combination has to be increased just the reciprocal of this so reciprocal of this quantity is what this quantity sigma f by rho so if you increase this sigma f by rho this material combination then mass will decrease clear so this particular combination is called the performance index okay so this particular material combination has to be decreased rho by sigma f has to be decreased to lower the value of mass 
so which one has to be increased to lower the mass just the reciprocal of this quantity so that is why sigma f by rho this quantity is called the performance index and sometimes this quantity is also called the material property index okay so up to this much it is clear that we have identified the performance index okay now what is next the after identifying the performance index suppose here you can see the expression that performance index p is equal to sigma f by rho and remember we are uh, doing a design for a uh, lightweight and strong tire rod for that this is what is the performance index what is the next step next step is we have to go to a chart which is called the SB plot as is the name of the uh, scientist who has given this idea of material selection so this is what is called the SB plot so which plot will take since sigma f and density is there so in the y axis you can see it is the strength and in the x axis it is the density okay so we will take that particular curve and in that particular curve this ratio is what is the performance index now if you look carefully this is a log log plot so to plot this performance index uh, what we do we will take the logarithm both sides so after multiplication we have taken the logarithm and the final expression will become like this so log of sigma f is equal to log of rho plus log of p okay where log of p is basically uh, if you consider log of sigma f and log of rho are the two variables then it is a straight line with this is what is the y intercept okay so this length is basically what is the log of p okay now here you can see uh, if you draw it's a straight line if you draw this line it will be a straight line now the question is what is the value of this performance index definitely to be more effective this performance index has to be high if the performance index is high definitely our design objective will be more and more fruitful right because our objective is to increase the performance so let us first consider some arbitrary value of this p and correspondingly you draw the curve so if you take p as say 10 pascal per gram per meter cube and if you draw the diagram that means it will start from here and now you take any two values of this according to the data and you will get this curve okay now you see that if you want to increase this performance index then what will happen if this performance index is increased then basically this point will go up so the y axis intercept will go up but other quantities will remain same that means this line will be shifted in this direction which means this line will be shifted in this direction so if you take instead of p is equal to 10 if you suppose take p is equal to 100 with the same unit then probably the curve will be like this probably the curve will be like this it will be exactly parallel to this one only because of increment of this p this curve will start from a higher value so as you go in that direction that means you are in a better position that means you are selecting better materials and remember all the materials along this line having the same performance considering strength and density that means for the tie rod that we are designing uh, that it, it is a low weight and high strength tie rod okay so our objective here you can see in strength density curve in the different 
uh, bubbles where basically the different types or different kinds of materials has been identified. So metals, their strength and density, if you compare, they are in this region. The polymers are in this region. Ceramics are in this region. Maybe the second level of diagram may be much more detailed of this. Suppose within metal, it can be the copper alloys, titanium alloys, the steels. Those also can be shown. Okay. So by this, by drawing this curve, in the SV chart and if we try to increase the performance in this that means we have to shift this line as far as possible perpendicular to this line okay initially we have drawn this line considering arbitrary value of P then parallel to that line we are trying to gradually shift it in that direction okay then in the lower side that means in the lower side all the material can be neglected so those material are not suitable for this particular functional requirement so we have we can only select the materials on that side because those are better materials because those are having higher performance index but again at the same time you remember along a particular line all the materials having the same performance okay based on uh, what we have done like strength and low weight now after that maybe some other requirements may come suppose uh, uh, the material of the tie rod is okay uh, maybe uh, ceramics are also showing a good material in that respect but ceramics are very brittle materials okay from that point of view we may neglect ceramics or maybe uh, say a manufacturing of ceramics are very difficult okay so from that point of view we may neglect ceramics so there are other considerations will also come but initial uh, initially we can at least identify few set of materials that are suitable and we can uh, eliminate uh, some of the materials um, for that particular functional needs so that is what is the sb charts it helps us to eliminate a lot of materials and helps us to identify some of the materials they are competitive and from the from those set of materials maybe other requirements will finally decide that which material is to be choose uh, is to be chosen okay so here you can see uh, p is equal to 100 diagram has been drawn which is basically shifted in that direction and you can see uh, these materials are then not considered maybe uh, the, here or here some materials are there maybe along with that some other materials uh, constraint may be imposed that the strength has to be minimum 100 megapascal okay uh, this kind of constraints if there then all these materials will go away only this portion will be there only this portion will be there there only the materials within this region then you have to select and along with that maybe other constraints like just i have told you then you have to select that what are the materials then maybe the cost will come and then some of will again eliminate so this is the way systematic way by which we can eliminate the uh, uh, material and finally we select some materials now let us take another uh, example where uh, it is a material selection for a stiff lightweight tie rod again we are trying to design a tie rod again it will be lightweight but now instead of a strength it is the stiffness which is the requirement maybe maybe for certain applications uh, it is uh, more important that it should not elongate easily so the stiffness is much more uh, important okay rather than strength so in that case how what will be the performance index so if you do that here you can see the expression of the stress and strain as you know that stress is equal to force divided by the area area is what so suppose the cross section uh, dimensions are c by c so it is c square and that is equal to modulus of elasticity into change of length this is, this is what is the elongation divided by length l the original length l. okay so from here you can see that is the requirement for the uh, elongation because now this elongation should not be very high this is what is the requirement for the stiffness and again mass 
is by the same relation density into length into area so which one is now the free variable the free variable is again the cross section so c this is what is the free variable so from these two equations we eliminate c so from these two equations if we eliminate c what you will get this mass will be f into l square by delta l into rho by e so this is what is the uh, functional and geometrical part but this portion what is important to us and that is the material property and to decrease mass this property set has to be decreased this property set has to be decreased means which one has to be increased just the reciprocal of this quantity which is e by rho so e by rho has to be increased and this quantity is called the performance index because performance has to be so what we do now we have to go to the asb chart now uh, we have to go to the asb chart So which SB chart we have to go? We have to go to the SB chart of E, which is basically the Young's modulus and the density. So in that SB chart, we plot E by rho. So what is E by rho? Again, if we see E by rho, again it is a log log plot. So what we have to take? We have to take logarithm because this is what is the performance index. And if you take the logarithm and then we have to plot log of E is equal to log of rho plus log of P. So again the curve may be like this. And then we have to shift the curve perpendicular to that line. And in this way, we'll try to eliminate some of the properties. And we select that which of the properties may be important or can be taken to for this kind of a material. Okay. The basic procedure is exactly the same that we have discussed. Now let us take another example where the material selection for a stiff and lightweight beam. Okay, now it is not a tie rod, it is a beam. Beam, you know, it takes the transverse load, right? Lightweight, again, we want a minimum weight and again, we want to design a stiff beam, okay? So that the deflection should not be very high so from your strength of material course already you know that uh, how can we find out the elongation of a beam if it is simply supported and some central load is there so you can find out the elongation at the central point okay so if you do that uh, you will find that uh, e will be equal to f by delta into l cube by 4 b to the power 4 okay so uh, actually the expression for the elongation is equal to some f into l cube by maybe 48 e into i okay so this is what is basically the expression for the elongation in a simply supported beam if the load is at the central position okay so uh, this derivation you will uh, see in your strength of material course uh, we can find out the elongation at the central position okay where the elongation will be maximum so for a rigid beam or for a stiff beam we want to minimize this quantity okay so if this is the expression then and what is this i this i you know the area moment of inertia 
of this cross section and this i is basically 1 by 12 here both b and h they are same okay so b to the power 4 actual expression is 1 by 12 b h cube but b and h are same so 1 by 12 b to the power 4 okay so uh, if you put that value of i here you can see it will be 1 by 12 and here it is 48 and that is why it will become 4 and b4 will remain there and delta is actually taken in that side and e is taken on other side okay so this is what is the expression that you are getting of e okay now from the mass requirement mass the expression is same a into l into rho and what is the free variable here free variable here is the cross section so we have one to eliminate cross section we have to eliminate cross section so if you eliminate cross section from these two expression then finally if you rearrange you will get that m is equal to f l to the power 5 by 4 delta whole to the power half which is contains basically the functional and geometrical requirements but the most important to us is this part which is the material combination material property index that is rho by e to the power half okay so to reduce the mass we have to reduce this quantity and to reduce this quantity means what is the performance index there's the reciprocal of this so the performance index is this one clear so this is an example where we want to uh, uh, select a material for a steep and lightweight beam where cross section and area is what is the free variable but the, for the same problem for the steep and lightweight beam if the situation is that you can only change the depth that means this depth you can change but you cannot change this width okay this width is fixed but you can change this one only okay so in that case in this expression of i 1 by 12 b h cube this b is what will be fixed but h that is variable okay that is what is the free variable not the whole cross section okay you have to consider that and you have to eliminate that h from these two equation again the problem is not very difficult and if you do that you will get the performance index will come e to the power one third by rho so this is your homework you try at your home that if you eliminate h you will get this one on the other hand if only beam width can change so in the other part the problem also can be in some situations that uh, h is fixed suppose h is fixed but the width can be varied so free variable there will be the width okay so if you do that uh, then uh, you will find that the performance index is coming e by rho okay so remaining things are almost similar whatever you have seen that on the sv chart you have to plot the corresponding performance index and then you have to move perpendicular to that by increasing the performance index and eliminate the materials and finally select some of the competitive materials that can be taken okay another uh, example where the performance index of strong strong means high strength and lightweight beam so previously we have done for the stiff beam but here we want a strong beam that means it can take a high amount of stress but the stiffness is not so important and again the beam so here again the consider the simply supported beam some central load is there so as you know the stress in the beam uh, that will depend on the uh, maximum stress will be according to uh, the stress at any uh, cross section at any position at any fiber is m y by i the general expression and for the maximum stress should not be more than sigma f maybe if you, a sigma f is the failure stress that is sigma m max okay into d by 2 okay that means either outer or the uh, outer position that means either top or the bottom fibers and 1 by 12 b d q which is the area moment of inertia so now if you further consider that this b and d having certain ratio and that ratio is say alpha 
so b can be considered as alpha into d so your area will become alpha into d square so if you put the value of b as alpha d then the expression will become this so now which one is the free variable here now free area free variable become this b so from these two expression mass is again the similar expression rho into l into a now from these two expressions we have to eliminate d so what you do you just find out what is the value of d from this expression from this expression you find out what is d so after finding out d just put the value of d here in this expression so if you put the value of d here in this expression it will become like this whole to the power two third is there okay whole to the power two third is there so finally uh, if you uh, rearrange all these terms you will find that mass is equal to some functional and geometrical uh, quantities and finally this is what is the material combination and this is what is the material property combination or uh, which is also called the material property index but to reduce the mass basically this quantity has to be decreased right so if this quantity is to be decreased that means what is the performance index performance index is the reciprocal of this one so sigma f to the power two third by rho is what is the performance index then what do you have to do basically you have to go to the sp chart corresponding to the strength versus density and you have to draw that uh, curve you have to draw the curve corresponding to p is equal to sigma to the power two third by density so if you take logarithm it will be uh, two third log of sigma f right two third log of sigma f is equal to log of rho plus log of p so this is what is the expression so here you can see uh, if you draw this one then the slope is what it will be 3 by 2 you cut this one so the slope will become uh, 3 by 2 of this plus 3 by 2 of this quantity now corresponding to some performance index if you draw it the slope you will get from here and suppose the line is this one then you increase the performance index that means you have to shift that line parallel perpendicular to this line so in this way you have to shift and you have to see that what are the materials that is falling in that direction and those are basically can be selected okay so this is what is the idea how we eliminate from the sp chart the materials now see another example where the performance index for a strong and lightweight torsional shaft material selection it is exactly in a similar way since it is a torsional shaft as you know the shear stress that will be developed is according to this formula tau by r is mt by j and tau will be is equal to if mt is the torque so 2 mt by pi r cube okay that is simply coming from here if you simplify it and that uh, tau definitely less than its failure value okay uh, this is what is the strength it has to be less than the strength the shear strength okay of the material so from this expression uh, if we uh, which one is the free variable the free variable is the radius so from these two equations you have to remove r here is basically the expression of mass exactly the similar way so remove r so finally you will get this is what is the expression and now if you rearrange for the mass what you will get finally you will get these are the functional and geometrical part but this is what is the material part okay so the performance index is the reciprocal of this one tau weight to the power two third by two but as you know that this uh, particular combination as which chart you require or you know that this tau f is related to the yield strength of the material okay that we have already seen in our failure uh, theory chapters so if you can relate that then that sigma f 
row chart can also serve the purpose okay so you have seen that how can you find out the performance uh, index and then in the as we chart how can we plot it and we can eliminate the materials and finally we select some of the competitive uh, materials that can be the possible choice now considerations of other parameters like facility of the manufacturing processes or the heat treatment processes or the environmental effects like corrosion or any other specific requirements for a particular applications okay and then we have to take the final decision regarding the material so how finally uh, we come to a uh, decision that this material can be selected always remember that material selection is not a very unique selection always always there are certain uh, optimality is there certain selection certain com uh, uh, certain alternatives um, will you you actually provide and finally uh, some decision is to be taken from different considerations and how systematically these different considerations are done uh, i'm showing one of the uh, one of the way by which this can be done so this method is what is called the rating chart so with the help of this rating chart finally among the selected materials that you have already done through the um, list of uh, materials that you have maybe selected from the uh, asb chart or something and then finally how can we uh, select a particular material for a particular component okay here is the systematic procedures how this rating chart is to be considered uh, let us not go into one by one in this way but through one example let us try to see how it is to be done and then finally we will understand that what are these steps here how the rating chart looks like okay so let us see uh, through one example so suppose uh, this is one example uh, where there are three competitive materials suppose x y and z for a particular application uh, suppose we have selected three materials x y and z uh, suppose we have initially studied the performance index drawn into the uh, sb chart and we have found that x y z uh, all of them can be taken because they are on the upper side of this card maybe okay so x y z are uh, the candidate materials that can be taken now how we will decide finally among x y z which material we have to take okay so three materials x y and z are available for a certain use okay now any material selected must have good weldability okay so the application is such for that component that this is a must have requirement that is the it has to be a good weldability if it if weldability is not good that material cannot be selected okay so this is one kind of a uh, it has to be had some uh, good weldability property so must have property okay now what other properties are important like tensile strength stiffness stability fatigue strength okay so these are also important have also been identified as the key requirements for that particular application okay now fatigue strength is considered the most important of these requirements okay so for that particular requirement uh, uh, stiffness strength both of them are required stability is also required but fatigue is the most important requirement among this and uh, stiffness is the least important so if you just try to create that the requirement of the different properties for that particular component then fatigue is the very important property because maybe that component is, will undergo some cyclic kind of a loading that is why the fatigue strength has to be very good maybe the stability is not so important okay the three materials can be rated as follows so uh, their properties uh, has been identified like weldability so x this candidate material having say excellent uh, weldability and y candidate may be poor weldability and z candidate is good weldability in this way tensile strength good excellent or fair stiffness stability and fatigue strength 
this we can always find out from the charts or from the uh, handbook data we can find out we can grade at least from their values that how the fatigue strengths of the different materials okay the question is you develop a rating chart to determine which material you would recommend whether x or y or z so for that the solution procedure first thing is that you have to identify if there is any go no go property in this example it has been told that weldability is the go no go property that means if weldability is not good that material cannot be selected even if the other properties are good so go no go property is weldability this is the first thing that you have to identify second thing is the property rating number so property rating number is symbolized here by small n what is that that is basically the comparison among the candidate materials comparison among the candidate materials for a specific property it is set from 1 to 5 now excellent is 5 very good is 4 good is 3 fair is 2 and poor is 1 okay now weighting factor weighting factor and this is basically the weightage among the properties required for a specific application that means stiffness is suppose 1 stability is 4 fatigue is 5 tensile strength is 4 why because in this particular problem it has been told that fatigue is the most important property that is required and stiffness is the least important property is required if we grade it from 1 to 5 we can consider that fatigue is 5 says stiffness is 1 and no information is given about stability and tensile strength so we have taken certain intermediate value suppose 4 and 4 again if we see what is property rating number it is the comparison among the candidate materials for a specific property excellent if we call it 5 very good is 4 good is 3 fair is 2 this will not be 4 this will be 2 and poor is 1 then here you can see the particular property different material having these different properties so this has been given according to whether it is 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5 okay so if we in this way if we numbered this uh, then finally the relative rating number capital r is calculated by property rating number multiplied by weighting factor okay so here you can see here are the three candidate materials x y and z and you see the weldability is a go no go screening where you can see that x having very good weldability so it is satisfied okay z is also satisfied because z is also having good weldability but y is not satisfying unsatisfied because y having poor poor weldability okay second one by one if you see the properties like stiffness now stiffness you see the what is the relative rating number of the stiffness you see that stiffness having uh, stiffness is requirement if you see for the x material the stiffness is good if the stiffness is good that means what is the property rating number of stiffness that is 3 what is the weighting factor of the stiffness that means for that component stiffness is how much important so that is 1 so what is the relative rating number of stiffness that is 3 because the x candidate having good stiffness so 3 but for the component stiffness is not so important so 1 so 3 into 1 that is what is this quantity relative rating number so that has been basically written here 3 into 1 now for the stability for the x material similar way we see that stability 
for that material may be good that is why 3 and stability is how important for that particular component it is given 4 weightage so 3 into 4 similarly for the fatigue for that particular x material the fatigue is maybe not so good okay so that is why it is 2 here you can see for the x material the fatigue is not so good it is fair so it is 2 okay but fatigue is very important for that component that property that is why 5 so 2 into 5 so in this way we calculate the relative rating number for each of this combination and the material okay so in this way we fill up this chart so after filling up this chart you just calculate what is the relative rating number capital r indicates the relative rating number so you take the summation corresponding to x of all this summation this and smaller is what is smaller smaller is the weighting factor so weighting factor if you add them up of the weighting factor that is 14 okay so weighting factors are same for all these cases so if you divide now this cap, uh, summation of the capital r that means relative rating number by the summation of the weighting factors then you will get this ratio which is 2.64 similarly if you do it for the y and z then you will get 4.14 and 3.43 now you just compare this number and you take the final decision so what you are getting which one is the highest number relative rating number ratio that is for y material so the most suitable one apparently it looks y but y do not have the go no go property so that is why y cannot be selected so what is next after y it is x or z it is z so it is 3.43 okay so it is satisfactory so it is satisfying the go no go property so our selection will be 3.43 so you can see so based on the chart below material y has the highest rating number however because it does not have satisfactory availability this is an absolute requirement and it should not be selected so material z should be used clear now finally uh, what i am not going to discuss in this lecture these are the certain many project topics that i have uh, framed for you and uh, maybe in some uh, live session we are going to discuss about this here you can see uh, finally you have to decide certain uh, practical applications like select the suitable material for a bike frame what is the systematic procedure you have to do in your project then select a suitable material for a um, brake disc a suitable material for an electrical cable suitable material for a boiler shell and a suitable material for an automobile engine valve spring these are certain uh, many projects that i have thought of for you and definitely i will discuss in a live session uh, about this and but you have to do all these things and finally you have to present it uh, and what is the procedure of presentation and how to find out the different properties and all that i will give all these sources here in this uh, slide i will also share with you where you will get this all uh, sb charts that will be required to select the materials that in the project problems here you can see the cost strength here you can see strength and cost per unit volume here you can see the fracture toughness in strength here you can see wear rate a constant and the hardness okay these are important in case of a brick disc uh, discussion okay thank you